In CG, a good material can mean the difference between a boring flat image and one that looks realistic and pleasing to the eye. If you've ever struggled trying to make a material look realistic, you're not alone. In a survey I conducted earlier this year, Blender users voted it as one of their biggest frustrations, which is why I'm making this video. The biggest mistake a lot of artists make when making a new material is downloading a texture and just applying it to the surface. The problem with this is that you're working with three-dimensional software, and since there's nothing in your image texture to signify the shape of the object, it ends up looking like a photo that's been glued to a piece of cardboard. So you need to help the 3D software to understand the material by making variations of the texture, then using those variations to signify where the small bumps are, where the gaps in the wood are, where to put the most reflection, or the scratches and dirt, and suddenly the material begins to look a lot more realistic. This is the method that I use to make the materials in my Architecture Academy trailers. And best of all, it's actually really easy to do once you know the basic steps. So that's what you're gonna learn in this tutorial. Within the next five minutes, you'll discover how to take this image texture and create a bump map, reflection map, and displacement map from it. Then we'll put it all into Blender to create a realistic material that goes from this to this. So to start with, you'll wanna download this image using the link below. Then open up Blender or your 3D software of choice and load the texture onto an unwrapped plane. Go to the node editor, add the image texture and connect it to the default diffuse shader. Add a glossy shader and then combine the two of them together using a mix shader. And so that you can see what you're doing, add a sphere that emits blue light. So we now have a simple texture applied to a plane. Now let's get on to the texture variations. First up, the bump map. The bump map is integral to any material, as it simulates surface level bumps, casting shadows and disrupting the reflections. Every single surface in the real world has bumps, so it's integral for the realism of any material. There's two ways to create a bump map. One is to create a black and white image, and the other is to create a normal map. Now both create good enough results, but the latter requires special software and more fiddling. I've already made a tutorial on normal maps, which you can watch here, but for this video, we're gonna proceed with the black and white bump map. So jump into an image editing software like Photoshop and start by converting your original texture to grayscale. The reason you need to do this is that the 3D software will treat the light values as raised bumps and the dark values as the dips or crevices. So with that in mind, we're gonna adjust the levels so that the lines between the tiles are really dark. You may want to tweak it more to get a nice mix of white and gray values across the top, but this is pretty much it. All you need to do now is save it as a separate JPEG and return to Blender. Then in the node editor, add your new image file and feed it through a bump node. Then connect it to both the diffuse and glossy shader. A very important point though, is that you set the image texture type to non-color data. And that's so that cycles can pull the correct data from it. You'll now notice when rendering that the material now has subtle bumps across the surface which cast shadows and affect the reflections. Now we're gonna take it a step further by creating the reflection or specularity map. This will be used to tell the 3D software which parts of the material are shiny and which parts are not. It's a surprisingly important part of the material, so don't skip it. Go to Photoshop and tweak the levels more. The dark values will mean no reflection and the light values will obviously get reflections. Now, I obviously don't want reflections in the crevices, so I'm making them really black, but I wanna get a healthy amount of reflection across the tiles with a subtle amount of gray in there just for some visual interest. Save that as a new JPEG, then once again, add that image to the node editor, and this time connect it to the factor input of the mix shader. And just like before, make sure you set the type to non-color data. So what all this will do is, is instead of it casting a blanket amount of gloss over the entire plane, it's now gonna read the image that we've just created and it's gonna put the gloss wherever there's white in the image and diffuse wherever there's black. Rendering it now, it looks pretty good. So we've got three textures in our material, the original diffuse texture, a bump map and a reflection map. The results already look far better than what we started with but there's one more thing that we can do which will push the realism even further, and that's by creating a displacement map. 
A displacement map is used for large scale detail. I used it heavily in my cliffs tutorial to create detailed rocks from an image texture. The large scale detail in this texture are the gaps between the tiles. Trying to model this by hand would be a nightmare, but we can do it quickly with a displacement map. Unlike the other textures, this one actually distorts the geometry of the model and therefore requires a high level of polys. So subdivide the plane 100 times and then add a subsurf modifier at level three, which should give us enough geometry for the displacement to work with. So we're gonna jump back into Photoshop and this time we're gonna crank the levels so that we can really only see the black crevices. Everything else should be white. Then in your 3D software, you wanna load that in as a displacement. To do that in Blender, just add a displacement modifier underneath the subsurf and click add a new texture. For the texture, set it to the image you just created. Adjust the strength of the displacement to something low like 0 0.002. And you now have actual crevices carved into your plane. The benefit of all this hard work is that the light actually reflects off the edges of the crevices and the shadows are much deeper, making the material overall look much more realistic. The downside is that the render times have increased. So if you were using this for an animation, you'd probably want to bake it, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So there you have it, a realistic material created using your own custom texture maps. Creating your own texture maps is a lot of fun and really valuable for learning, especially at the start. But when you're working on a really large scene, it will slow things down. Which is why I'm working on a new texture website that provides the normal displacement and reflection maps for you. It's not yet finished, but in the future I'll be looking for beta testers to give some early feedback on the site. If you'd like to test the site when it comes available, click the link below and enter your email. But that's it from me. Remember that when you're making your next realistic material, you need a minimum of the bump map, reflection, and displacement map. And if you'd like to take it a step further, try adding your own grunts, scratches, or paint to the texture. For more info on texturing, watch my secret to advanced texturing tutorial, or how to create rust. If you learned something from this video, click like. And so that you don't miss future Blender tutorials like this one, click subscribe. That's it from me, thanks for watching.